Manipulation of Dental Amalgam Correct proportioning of alloy and mercury is essential for forming a suitable mass of amalgam. Some alloys require mercury alloy ratios in excess of 1 gem 1, whereas others use ratios of less than 1 gem 1, with the percentage of mercury varying from 43% to 54%. Excess mercury in the restoration can lead to the decreased strength. Increased flow and creep, which results in failure of the restoration. Increased expansion, which can cause pain during chewing and disturbed occlusion. Increased tarnish and corrosion, which can lead to the failure of the restoration. Whereas less mercury in the restoration can lead to the non-coherent mass. Weak restoration and restoration with less resistance to tarnish and corrosion. This all can cause the failure of the restoration. Methods of Dispensing Alloy and Mercury A wide variety of mercury and alloy dispensers are available. The most common is the dispenser based on volumetric proportioning. Pre-weighed pellets or tablets are a more convenient method for correctly dispensing the alloy. Disposable capsules containing pre-proportioned amount of mercury and alloy are now widely used. They contain alloy either in pellet form, or as a pre-weighed portion of powder, with the appropriate quantity of mercury. Some alloys are now available in self-activating capsule, which automatically release the mercury into the alloy chamber, during the first few oscillations of the amalgamator. Although the pre-proportioned material is more expensive, it is convenient, and it eliminates the chance of mercury spills during proportioning. Trituration It is the process of mixing the amalgam alloy particles with mercury. The amalgam mix should be coherent, homogeneous, and smooth. Amalgam should have a plastic mass consistency. The purpose of trituration, is to provide proper amalgamation of the mercury and alloy. The alloy particles are coated with a film of oxide, which is difficult for the mercury to penetrate. This film must be rubbed off in some manner, so that a clean surface of alloy can come in contact with the mercury. The oxide layer is removed by abrasion, when the alloy particles and mercury are triturated. Originally, the alloy and mercury were mixed, and was triturated by hand with a mortar and pestle. Mechanical amalgamation saves time and standardizes the procedure. Objectives of trituration are To dissolve alloy particles in mercury, so as to obtain a plastic mass of amalgam, which can be condensed into the prepared cavity. To remove oxide film coated on the alloy particles. And to pulverize the alloy particles for proper wetting by mercury. A glass mortar and pestle is used for the manual mixing of dental amalgam. The inner surface of the mortar is rough, which will help by increasing the friction between amalgam and glass surface. Here adequate amount of alloy and mercury are taken into the mortar, and with the help of the pestle they are mixed together. In manual mixing mercury require is slightly more than that require in mechanical mixing, so this excess mercury should be removed by squeezing the mix with a squeezing cloth. Mechanical trituration Mechanical device used for mechanical mixing of the dental amalgam is called an amalgamator. Amalgamators are available in different speed settings. In this amalgamator, we need to use capsule containing alloy and mercury. There are disposable capsules which contains pre-proportioned alloy and mercury. An empty capsule, in which, we need to dispense the alloy and mercury are also available. Some capsule contains cylindrical metal or plastic inside the capsule. This cylindrical metal or plastic serves as pestle inside the capsule. The mixing arm carrying a capsule moves back and forth in a straight line. 
or mixing arm moves back and forth in a figure of eight or mixing arm can also move in a centrifugal movements when the capsule has been secured in the machine and it is turned on the arms holding the capsule oscillate at high speed this is how trituration is accomplished after the amalgam is triturated the mix from the capsule is removed and it can be condensed into the tooth cavity. Mulling is a continuation of trituration. It is done to improve the uniformity of the mass, coherence, and get the single consistent mix. Due to the continuous folding of the dental amalgam mass, from the side of the mortar to the center, a layered mass is developed, which is made more coherent by hand mulling. It can be accomplished in two ways. By kneading the plastic amalgam mix in a piece of rubber dam, and by triturating the mix in a pestle-free capsule, for two to three seconds after the specified time. Mulling is not necessary for mechanically triturated amalgam. Condensation it refers to the incremental placement of the amalgam into the prepared cavity, and compression of each increment into the previously condensed increment of amalgam. Amalgam should be condensed into the cavity within three minutes after trituration. The goal of condensation is to compact the alloy into the prepared cavity, so that the greatest possible density is attained. This results from a reduction of excess mercury and porosity within the said amalgam. Here you can see the objectives of condensation. By condensing the amalgam restoration, unreacted gamma particles comes together. By condensing, we adapt amalgam to the margins, walls, and line angles of the cavity. By condensing, we reduce the mercury content as much as possible. Condensation is done to bring mercury on the top of each increment, it is done to bind the increments to one another. Condensation is done to minimize voids within the amalgam mass, and increasing the density of the restoration. Condensation is done to increase the rate of hardening, so we don't have to wait for so long to star the carving of the dental amalgam restoration. The field of operation must be kept absolutely dry during condensation. Amalgam increments are condensed by overlapping steps and lateral pushing. Condensation is usually done by the use of hand, automatic, or ultrasonic condensers. Sufficient pressure should be used to remove voids, and to adapt the material to the walls. Amalgam must be condensed with 3 to 5 kg force. Small condensers provide greater condensation force. Ultrasonic condensers are not preferred to avoid mercury evaporation. The longer the time that elapses between mixing and condensation, the weaker the amalgam will be. The cavity should be overfilled before carving to ensure proper closure of margins and removal of the layer of amalgam with rich mercury content. Carving Before starting carving of the restoration, pre-carving burnishing is carried out. It is carried out using a large ball burnisher for 15 seconds. Use light force and move from the center of the restoration to the margins of the restoration. It is continuation of condensation, and it reduces the size and number of voids on the critical surface and marginal area of the amalgam. After the amalgam has been condensed into the prepared cavity, the restoration is carved to reproduce the proper tooth anatomy. Using remaining enamel as a guide, carving is carried out gently from enamel towards the center, and recreate the lost anatomy of the tooth. Amalgam should be hard enough to offer resistance to carving instrument. Scraping or ringing sound should be heard during carving of the restoration. 
If carving is started too soon, amalgam will pull away from margins, and our efforts will go in vain. The objective of carving is to simulate the anatomy, rather than to reproduce extremely fine detail. To produce a restoration with no overhangs, which can lead to failure of the restoration. To produce a restoration with functional and non-interfering occlusal anatomy, because non-occlusal anatomy will cause pain to the patient. To produce a restoration with adequate compatible marginal ridges, which should look aesthetically good. To produce a restoration with proper size, location, extent and interrelationship of contact areas, to avoid failure of restoration. To produce a restoration with physiologically compatible embrasures, which will prevent any harm to the gums. And to produce a restoration with no interference with integrity of periodontium. Burnishing Following carving we have to check the occlusion, and after that carry out a brief final burnish, it is also called as post-carve burnishing. For carving we have to use a large burnisher at a low pressure load, and burnish outwards towards the margins of the restoration. It improves the smoothness of the restoration. Heat generation should be avoided during burnishing. If temperature raises above 60 degrees centigrade, it causes release of mercury, which accelerates corrosion and it can cause fracture at margins. Objective of the burnishing are To further decrease the size and number of voids To express excess mercury on the surface of the amalgam restoration And to adapt amalgam to the cavo surface anatomy Finishing and polishing Finishing can be defined as the process, which continues the carving objectives, removes flash and overhangs and corrects minimal enamel underhangs. It should be carried out 24 hours after amalgam insertion. It provides better aesthetic, and allows prolonged service with minimal corrosion. Polishing is the process which creates a corrosion-resistant layer by removing scratches and irregularities from the surface. Polishing agents used are precipitated chalk, tin, or zinc oxide. 